Party people! Hello! It is Randy for Thunder Horse Ascendant. I am here today with the Voyage to Athens. Now, this is Sam's uh, bead box, and this is going to be our first project video. So, uh, we're going to get into it. I have not made a plan for this uh, box yet. We're just kind of easing into it on the channel. It's a new box to the channel, so I haven't made a plan. I'm just going to do a design on the fly for this video, so we're going to just kind of do that today, and probably for a few other projects. Now, I do have some ideas in mind, giving credit where credit is due. I uh, recently received some new books. Um, if you have not heard of Easy Beading, um, the volume series uh we i did receive some of those books we looked through them and there was a few projects that stuck out to me and i was like oh maybe we could you know utilize that for a little bit of inspiration we did that on members only um videos last week so if you're not a member i invite you to check out the join button down there um members get uh their own live on wednesday and um they get some behind the scenes videos and um, other perks and things, get your videos early and stuff like that. So um, we did take a look at those books and I do have a few projects that stuck out to me. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do that for this, but we're going to jump into it today. Excuse my hair. Uh, like my personality, it is a mess. And uh, let's get down to the mat, get this party started. All righty. Here we are. So I have opened this. It was uh, earlier in the week uh, that I opened this. So I did the unboxing video. Oh, that's an interesting noise. <laughs> like what? What is that? I think it's the air conditioner thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so these are the beads we received. Now. Um, for those of you who did see the unboxing, there was quite a few questions about these big chunks of Amazonite. And um, I do have a little plan for these, and it's a really simple little necklace. And I was also thinking I might make an additional bracelet. Um, so I'm gonna grab up this little wreath right here. And so I really only need one of these. I'm gonna make this kind of like really simple pendant necklace. Um, uh, using some suede lace. So if you've been uh, hanging out around here, you know that we've been kind of looking at our findings and we've been looking at different ways and uh, findings we use and how to utilize findings. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to um, use like fold over uh, crimps or talk, uh, we call them taco foldovers, uh, whatever. So we're going to take a look at these today. So I'm going to put the rest of this back in the box. The rest of these beads are really um, beautiful and are, you know, going to be the star of the show at a different time. But as of right now, I think that we are only going to utilize these guys here. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to start with the necklace. So I received a bunch of different size chunks here and uh, it's really up to you what size chunk you want to use I, I of course am, am I'm gonna use the biggest one because <laughs> that's how I roll uh, but you can see that I did use um, I did get a, a number of different size chunks now if you did want to do like a tapering situation with these you could go like this there is you know a number of sizes and things so it's completely up to you if you wanted to use maybe a smaller one to start out with whatever you want to do i'm going to use this big one i'm going to put these others up here for the time being and um, i'm going to get out some wire let's see what 
color wire do I want to use? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Kind of feeling. I'm kind of feeling like I might I might want to use some some square wire, honestly, but I'm not seeing any square wire down here. Why? Nobody knows. It's probably all upstairs. Oh, we got a smidge. Hold on. Just double checking. I have a smidge of silver, so silver it is, I guess. We are going to use 21 gauge square titanium. And I might be able to make a couple out of that. So silver it looks like it is. Now, why do I want to use these? Well, let me see here. I have this roll of, if I can get it off the shelf here. <clears throat> uh, I have this roll of suede lace. And uh, I've had this for quite a while, obviously, and I have quite a lot of it. And I'm like, okay, well, I've had this sitting around here. What are we doing? Because uh, that's always my my thing. I'm like, what are we doing with this? Uh, so I'm going to use this, and then I want to use some uh, talk foldovers. It looks like I'm going to use silver. So let me see if I have any uh, out here. I assume I probably do somewhere. All the findings, you know. Looks like I've got um, leather ends and I have. Uh, here we go. There we are. I got leather ends, I got cup chain ends, all the, all the ends. But what I'm looking for is right here. So these are the taco foldover ends that I'm going to use, and I don't know how many exactly I'm going to need. I'm going to get four out of here. Is that four or three? That's three. Dun 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 dun. dun. Here we go. All right. So these are what we are considering to be our taco foldover ends. So. They have a little ridge, they're silver, same as the wire, and this is what we're going to make our necklace with. So this, like I said, it's going to be a really super easy, cute necklace, uh, but in my opinion, this would be a necklace that I would be able to probably sell at a craft show or something to that extent, maybe even, you know, in my website shop, on my jewelry shop online. So uh, I'm fine with it. So before we start with our chain, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my stone. So how I do this usually is I will take about one, one loop in length of square wire and I'm going to get these things out of the way so my camera can focus. Okay. And so this is square wire. Now the reason I like to wear use, wear square wire. The reason I like to use it is because it does give a different effect when you wrap it. Because it is square, it's going to give kind of like a super shiny effect. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. It's really up to you. However you want to do it. Um, I'm going to wrap mine up and down. Okay. And you know, like I said, this is this is completely your choice. You can you can do whatever you want. So if you wanted to create a uh, like a ball head pin type, you could do that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I I generally do that, but I don't think I'm going to. Uh, right now, I'm just going to put this kind of almost in the middle, not quite in the middle, more to one side maybe. And I'm going to take this bottom part and I'm just going to wrap it up over the top. And I'm going to spin like so. Now, if you had 
say maybe another bead you wanted to add on top, this would be the time to do that. Okay? However you want to go about it, it's up to you. Okay? So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round nose and I'm going to create a loop here and I do want it to be a little bit bigger so I'm going to go down to the middle of my plier I'm just creating a wire wrapped loop as I normally would just working around that tail okay until I'm completely wrapped and all the wraps are meeting you can see there and I am going to take my square nose and just kind of straighten this up. And now here's your choice. If you want this to be in the front, you can. If you want it to be in the back, it can be in the back. Um, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll put, leave mine in the back for now. Why not? So I'm just going to wrap this tail to the front like so. And this one, um, I'm not going to worry about that one right at this particular moment. I'm just going to kind of get this to the front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chain nose. I'm going to get a hold of that end of the wire. There should be no wire sticking out. And I'm going to I'm going to create just like a fancy little loop-de-loop, okay? Like a razzle-dazzle, if you will. <clears throat> now, in order to do that, I'm going to move my plier that way away from me and I'm going to spin the stone towards me so I'm going to be wrapping with this guy out away from me and spinning the stone towards me at the same time you have to kind of do it a little bit fast you got to commit to the wrap because if you slow up you're going to change the way the wire is wrapping okay so just make sure you got a hold of your wire end really good and here we go ready and so there's there's the first one. I'm going to keep going, same thing. I'm going this way with the rock and this way with the plier. Okay. Now you can see this is wiring up on the front. And you can go, you know, as much or as little as you want to go. Whatever you want to do. So now that I have that, I'm not going to mess with it. Here's what it looks like. It's just a little wrappy wrap. I'm not going to mess with it at all. I'm going to bring this front one around, or this one that's in the back. I'm going to bring that guy around to the front. And here's what he's looking like. So I'm going to grab a hold of that guy, and I'm just going to give him a little, little wrap as well. Okay, just so he looks like he's supposed to be involved. Then, once I have that, now is where I'm going to play around, you know, till I'm content with it. So, I'm just going to kind of roll this guy back on himself. I'm going to use my fingers to push down. And this guy here. You know, you can tie them up together, you can wrap them around, have one sticking out, one not, whatever you want to do. Um, once you have it where you want, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to trim this little part off. I'm going to take my chain nose and I'm going to just kind of tighten these up here, make sure this is tight. And I'm in debate if I want to pull this one down a little bit. I don't know if I do. I'm just pulling it out so I can then kind of maneuver it how I would like just to get it down a little bit more. And, and then I check and see if I like that kind of thing. I feel like, I feel like I do like it. This one's kind of sitting 
in the middle a little bit. And then again I can tighten how I want. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take this guy around one more time. I thought I was gonna like him down there, but now I don't think I do. That's fine. I'm just gonna move him around up here. There we go. So basically, I want this to kind of look like uh, if you were putting strings, making those little curly cues on a present. That's what I want to look like. Okay? That's just me. You do whatever you want. Now, the only important part <clears throat> that you really want to deal with is these ends where you're pulling on it. Okay? So once you get it up there where you want it, you're then going to trim that little end off. You don't have to do as much as me, but, you know, you don't want it to be jumping out and poking nobody. So I am pretty content with this. Here's what it looks like. And I am going to be stringing it on, this being the front. So I am going to make sure my loop here is so that I can do that, so that I can stick my string through. And there we go. So you can see the square wire gives it a little more like, I don't know, kind of dimension if you will. I like that kind of thing. Alright, so that is our pendant. Our pendant is ready to go. Back looks like this. And there we are. Now if you wanted to do more razzle dazzle, you absolutely can do that. I'm going to leave mine the way it is. And we're going to move on to the stringing portion. <clears throat> so I want to make this, let's say, uh, 20 inches. Let's 20 seems good, yeah? I feel like 20 is good. So let's do 20. Let me get my... We might even add an extender. So I'm going to need two pieces of this because I'm doing, in essence, a double strand. So I'm actually going to get 19 inches. Once I get my findings and everything on, it'll be 20 inches. Okay, do do do. Okay, so 19 inches, here we are. And now the second one, I want to make longer because I have a little razzle dazzle for the front. So for that one, I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to do the 19. And then I'm going to give myself. Mm, about six inches more okay now that one it doesn't really need to matter too much because we're gonna I'll show you what we're gonna do but in the interim okay so now we're gonna go ahead and put on our taco fold over clasps now this is pretty easy so what you want to do is take your two pieces of leather or suede lace marry them up on one end Okay, now this is just an extra step that I do. I take a little bit of Loctite glue and I'll put that into this little taco fold over. Not too much now. You don't want to be getting crazy. Okay, so it's got a little smidgy dot in there. I take my ends and I'm going to cut my ends so they're together flat flush, if you will. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm stick them into this taco fold over clasp. Now inside this taco fold over clasp, there is a little notch on the bottom. So I'm holding it in there because uh, it has a it has that little notch and there's glue in there and I want to give it a little second to dry, right? So I'll just put that in there like so. Now I'm not, I didn't necessarily glue in the top one, but that's fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chain nose and I'm going to create, I don't know if you guys can see me here, I'm bringing this together at like a point 
Let me make sure I got that one in there. You did. Making sure everything's in there. <clears throat> and this is why I call them tacos foldovers, because in essence you're creating a taco shell, right? You're putting your stuff in there, you got your taco shell, okay? So you're bringing them together up the top to close up your taco shell. Okay, you make sure it's even. Now, once you have that, we're going to go to the square nose. And I'm going to literally, once they're together, you want to make sure they're very much meeting up at the top. Once you have that, I'm going to put my, my player like so over the taco and in the middle. And you have to commit to the scrunch. And you're going to scrunch. Are you ready for the scrunching? So I'm going to hold on to this and I'm going to scrunch. It's not going to be perfect the first time you do it. Then you're going to do the sides. You're going to scrunch. And over here you're going to scrunch. Okay. Now you want to scrunch, but you don't want to completely squish. If you completely squish, there's a possibility that you could... Uh, cut off your leathers down here at the end. So you just want to make sure they're about the same size in there. Now you can, if you want to, you know, bring them together a little more so they actually fold over each other. So that is, that is, would look like so. Once you got them in there, you give them a little squish on the side. Not too much. You don't want to go all the way. <clears throat> and this is why I call them taco foldover clasps. Now, you can see that there is that little point in there and it bit into that leather when I closed it up. Okay, so this thing is secure. So now, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we'll do it one more time. So now, these are not even. That's fine. We're just going to bring them around like so. And we're going to put these guys married up at the end. Now, you do want to make sure that you have the same one on the top. I have the short one on the top and the long one on the bottom, as I did on the other side. And these ones look pretty flush, so I'm not too terribly worried about that. We're going to get our next one. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. You're going to take your Loctite Super Glue inside your taco foldover. You're going to do a little smidge of glue, not too much. You don't want glue spitting out all over the place. It's easy. And then, oh, now I feel like I may have gotten them messed up. Let me see. So, yeah. So now, I squished mine around. I have short one on the bottom and long one on the top. Short one on the bottom, long one on the top. Stack them up. Put it in there. Line it up. Push down with your finger and hold it. Give it a little hot second to dry. Oh my goodness, you guys. You want to know what I forgot? We almost forgot to put on our pendant. Hold on a second. Hold on, back this train up. We're going to put our pendant on. I'm putting the pendant on the little one. Okay, pendant on the little one. You go back in there. Just about. We just about had a travesty. Just about, but not quite enough. All right, we try again. Okay, now we have our pendant on. <laughs> He's on the little string. Right here. All right. Now we are going to come in with the chain nose and we're going to create a taco shell. Okay. 
and create the taco shell. We're going to stuff the toppings down into the taco shell to make sure they are all in there. Black fill. And we make sure that the taco comes together at the top. There we go, taco shell. <clears throat> Switch to the square nose. Put this guy right in the middle. Okay, it's going to feel weird. And then we are going to hold on to it and commit to the scrunch. And scrunch. And scrunch. And scrunch. Okay. This one, scrunch, scrunch, okay. Then we're going to go to the side and we're going to scrunch until one side, you're going to give little, little bits of scrunchiness until one side goes over the other. Once you got that, you're going to then push it down if it's wonky like mine. Sometimes they don't always work out perfectly. It's fine. And there we go. So now, let me zoom out a little bit. Here's what we have, okay? So, before we go any further, I'm going to put on the findings. So, for this guy, I think we're going to need a lobster class. And... I think I, I think I will do a extender chain just because you know maybe somebody wants a little less or a little more. Let me get an extender chain here in silver. There we go. And of course we're going to need some jump rings. So I'm using these six millimeter ovals. And I'm just going to go ahead and take this oval and I'm going to put it on my lobster. Right onto this finding, the, to the taco fold over. I love a taco fold over. And same thing on this side. going to put my extender chain on. Alright. Close that up. So, here's what our findings are looking like very put together we can also put something at the end now here's where the second string comes into play you could leave it like this you could leave it like this and just you know or maybe you put another a second stone a double Z's perhaps on the on that one if you want to maybe a smaller one okay this is all completely up to you design choices are your business okay this is what we do you could do that that would be cute you know or you could even use this like little wreath charm thing and whip him on there if you want you could have mixed media whatever you want to do but what I'm gonna do is I am going to marry up these ends and I'm gonna find the middle of this and the middle of this longest string I'm gonna cut it I know you're like Randy why because I want to <laughs> because I want to. So we know that this part is uh, about 20 inches and we have the extender chain on, right? So what we want to do with this other part here is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally go ahead and tie a knot in it like this. You can tie whatever kind of knot you want. You could tie an overhand knot. Um, you could tie, maybe I'll try an overhead knot, whatever kind of knot you want to try, 
you can totally do that. Um, I'm going to pull it down. So I just want to give a little illusion of these leather tails. Right? And I might even want to put a little bead on there or something. So this is what you got going on. I don't know if they gave us a, a large enough bead to maybe put a bead on there. Uh, maybe I will look. Let's just take a little look through here. Um, I don't know that I'm seeing any larger hole beads. Let me do this guy. Oh, he's cute. Uh, a mixed metal would be cute. Uh, but in this instance, let me just grab up some metal from my stash over here. <coughs> Here's some larger hold metal silver beads. I don't I didn't even look at them. They're just the first ones I saw. What does this say? It says something on it in French. Spanish? Me? I don't know exactly what that means. but it has letters on it. Let's see if we got a little something else. I don't know what the letters mean, so I don't want to put them on there if I don't know what they mean. couple of options. I gotta Google this. I don't know what these mean. So, a couple of medals. Let's try one of these bad boys. Stick to these smaller ones. You could also put a charm on here or something, you know, a little symbolism, if you will. Whatever you want to do. Her look -see. Oh, yeah, so cute. I'm gonna lose those ones. This is really cute. Um, you could even move this up a little further if you wanted. But basically, uh, this is going to be hanging. You can do it either behind or in front. I think it's really cute. You could even you could even leave this a little bit loose so that you know you could tie it wherever you want for that day. I think that is cute. Let's give that a roll. You can leave them open. I'm trying to get this guy just to back up a little bit. You know, and it can be like an option if you want to. If that's the case and you want to keep untying it, you might want to not tie it so tight. But that's cute. 
you could tie it to the side. Okay, so although this might look like a little bit of a jumbly mess, let's put it on the, um, the form so you can see. Okay. So if you guys are new to Sam's bead box or if you have had some experiences with them, I will have all of the Sam's information linked down in the comments of this video. Um, full discrepancy, they did send me this box. Um, I did not pay money for it. I do think it is very cute and I have given my opinions on um, the quality, which I think the quality is very good um, with the different stones and things. Now this is my first box for the most part and I don't know what the other boxes will bring, but this one was very fun. So I think I like where we're headed so far. And this is what he looks like. Cute, right? So you could do this guy in the front. You could do him in the back. You know, it looks like you're wearing two separate necklaces. Um, it is kind of going off to the side. Let me put this where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> I think I just, there we go. So there you go. Uh, I think it's a really cute little like layered look. And you could do it however you kind of want to, which I think is fun. And even if you didn't want to do the second one, you wouldn't have to do the second one. You could just do this guy. And this is super cute. Right? And in my personal opinion, these are uh, things that will probably sell at the craft show. So I kind of want to show you how it looks on, even though we're looking at the bust. But let me get this hair up all the way. Maybe. Yeah, yeah missed some. Nobody's surprised. Okay. <laughs> like I said. It's a hair thing. All right, so let's take this off. I actually kind of have a decent shirt on today for mo <laughs> for modeling necklaces, I guess. I, I usually don't. I'm usually got like some kind of weird craziness going on. But this seems to be like pretty, probably a pretty good canvas. So. I don't want to put it on twisted. There we go. And yeah. kind of putting it kind of short, but kind of not. Yeah, I think that's super cute. So it kind of looks like very simple almost kind of primitive looking um but still has a little bit of razzle dazzle now here's what i was talking about with the side thing so i, th I think i tied this one kind of loose oh, i'm using you guys as a mirror sorry <laughs> so since this is just like a little razzle dazzle part Can't see. <clears throat> okay. You wouldn't have to tie them at all. You could tie them over here very lightly. So it looks like it looks like it's uh let me try that again. So it looks like it's like a wraparound leather necklace, almost like a lariat type. So I'm tying this one kind of shorter. and not tight so I can get it undone. Right? So it looks like you've kind of wrapped around and tied this on kind of situation. I think that's really cute actually. 
I want to tie it a little tighter. <clears throat> I don't really like things wrapped up around my neck, but you know, when the situation calls for it. There we go. Now we're talking. That's cute. Ooh, I like that. I do. I like that. So cute. Oh, you guys, I gotta show you my new cup. I just got this in the mail today. It says I'm in my wifey era. It's one of these little glass cups. I got it on Amazon. Um, for review <laughs> and I've never had one of these before it's kind of weird but I kind of think it's kind of cute has a glass straw you didn't know I'm engaged look at this <clears throat> totes and we have one two three four others where we could be making different uh you know the doubles or just putting them on the little strings because let's be honest how many of you have a whole drawer full of suede lace and leather and ribbon and things and stuff <laughs> like me and it's just sitting there so i think this is quite cute and although um this is Sam's bead box voyage to Athens. You know, I would I would think that this would be maybe kind of like an ancient Greek situation. <clears throat> I mean, we're not really sticking to their theme really, but like uh, a very primitive type, simple, super cute necklace. So there we go. I'm gonna keep this one. I think it's cute. <laughs> that was easy. All right, y'all. I hope you're all having a lovely, spectacular, amazing beading day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.